In this episode of Mighty Car Mods, our Lavorg build continues. We're getting deep down and nerdy into this mad car. Now, I know I say it every single time, but mark my words. Oh, no. Put it on a T-shirt. It's starting this episode, people. It's what? It is starting this episode. I certainly hope so. Welcome to another episode of Mighty Car Mods. I'm getting pretty excited by how this Lavorg swap's going. Last episode, we got subframes in, we did all the big stuff. I was actually shocked at how quickly we were able to- I'm shocked as well, because I still have in my head Marty saying, let's get this Civic. It'll just take one or two days. We'll swap <laughs> some stuff into it and paint it. We'll be done in a week and 10 episodes Months later. later. But this is actually Months working. Later. It's, it's actually great. Subaru Lego. Yep, it's, it's amazing. It's Subaru Lego. Now there are there are have been some surprises, some stuff we weren't ready for. There are things that we're still very uncertain about. This episode, we're gonna dive deep into some of the nerdy things because I think there's gonna be some worrying stuff that's gonna trip us up. The we need are, some help, Martin. The cars what we are need. mostly the same, but also not. So I have called up a mate of mine, Miles, you guys might have seen before from Flux Electronics. He's really good at this stuff. He's got a V8 swap VRZ that's all factory finished. And uh, he offered to give me a hand, which I'm very appreciative of. So this episode, we're gonna get nerdy and make it work. Miles helped me wire up my Mini back in the day, yep. doing like stereo stuff, central locking, solenoid stuff. He's a very, very clever dude. Now, while they are getting deep with that, uh, what I've realised is that some of the panels from the SDI are not actually going to fit on here as we thought they would, and they're the wrong colour, because obviously we want that kind of, they're like wider front guards and stuff exactly. like that, yep. that we want to put onto the grovel. So, while they're getting deep into the nerdy stuff, uh, I'm going to get the panels off the SDI and I'm going to go to Trung and organise to get them painted and also check out the other parts to see if they need to be either replaced or modified. And by the end of this video, hopefully they've got that bit sorted, i got the body stuff sorted, and together, people... Grab a seatbelt, strap team yourself in. Work. In a car this modern, wiring is probably the trickiest part of a project like this, and we have no idea if the two looms will talk to each other. They might look similar, but that doesn't mean that it'll work. This is actually the hardest bit of this entire project, is getting all the wiring to talk to itself. Um, you can get a car from 40 years ago, like an RX-7 with five wires. How many do you reckon's in this? Uh, thousand, 500, 500, thousand, something like that. <laughs> 500, yeah. 500, thousand. Yeah. What we have to do now is um, work out what is different by looking at that loom, cutting it open, and then unpinning the bits we need from that loom, and then grafting it onto this loom. You know and what tricked me is that a lot of the plugs are the same. Exactly So the they've same. put them in the same position with the same clips, the same size plug, the same everything, and it's only when you look really close, you go, that one's got 29 wires, not 28. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, and some of them might be in different positions and stuff like that. And because this has CAN, what effect does that have on the way everything works? Well, basically the CAN network might be getting to say the dash loom, and if the CAN wires aren't connected, then it can't talk to the ass end of the car. Right. So it can't talk to any of its security modules or you know anything that is relying on CAN in the backside of the car yep. is just not on the network. Not work, which would be locking and unlocking? Yeah, locking and Wireless. unlocking, things like antennas, um, security modules, uh, anything if it, if it had an auto-closing boot up and down sort of thing, which I don't think this one does, does it? No, it's got uh, the electronic button. But yeah, it, you all, still all that it. kind of stuff. So, um, and the, you know, the dashboard is a little bit like a Christmas tree saying it's got all sorts of errors, which we can scan out later. Yeah. But yeah, basically uh, it's a case of go through the loom and graft it on and and then um, once it's once we've done that sort of thing and the, you know, the engine cranks and turns, then we can plug a scan tool into it and find out what it's cranky about. So we're up to the point, we are now needing to tell this automatic car that it's a manual and we need to connect the DC to CD controllers and all the stuff that shifts that around, which is just not here. So that's the next job. Yeah. Should we do it? Yeah, let's do it. The STI and the Lavorg dash are nearly identical and it all clips in easily. The gear stick and pedals are a direct bolting too. And although we may have to remove it all again, we're putting these things in place so we can line it all up, particularly the stuff we cut out of the various looms in the STI to then graft back into the Lavorg. Side drive, whatever the... Let's call it the plug we need. The plug we need. And the plug Should we need. Should go into that, right? Yeah, so that, that goes... Well, there's two there. Oh, no, one's a light. Th that's the cigarette lighter. Oh, Siggy butt brand. Yeah, so that goes there. Yep. And this would have gone in the middle of the car. So that that that's that plug. That's what Lavorg doesn't have. That's right. So this these plugs here were in the passenger kick panel. Right. So imagine this used to be that way and oh, this was here. Oh, on the passenger here. side. Okay. Yeah, so you've got one wire coming off this which is running to the centre. So that's this is like a plug that connects yep. the driver and passenger side yep. body looms together. That's just behind the gear stick. Yep, that's behind the gear stick. So we find out what pin that's in 
and we make sure that it's not populated or what it's populated with on that side. Yep. And then the rest of the wiring coming off it, we've got two black wires. I'm going to assume that, yep, assume that's ground. 100%. It goes this way somewhere, goes to ground. And then the rest of it is these colors there. Yep. So when we, when I get rid of the rest of these wires, we work out where that's going Man. into which plug. And then, yeah. These are likely comms wires, you reckon? That, yeah, twisted pairs are generally like CAN bus wires. People get really or, scared of this, don't they? Speaker. People get oh yeah, people get really scared of this. Yeah. Like they see this and they're freaking out. Going, oh, I could never, I could never do it. But it's, I mean, diagrams obviously help because this this will have a number like B forty five or something in That's a diagram, right. and you'll yep. go B forty five pin three. Then it'll say the color, which in yep. that case would be yellow with a black stripe, like YB yep. or something, and then. You go, okay, and you can actually remove those pins, right? Yeah, that's With right. a tool. Yeah, this is a little, like the pinning tool. Yep. So you push down a lever, you slide it out, yep. take as many reference photos of where it is yeah. in the pin before. So don't just go yoink, 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 and then go over to that car. Ideally, what you would do is if you were really worried about it, you take all of this out and then overlay it in that uh, car yeah, right. and then do pin for pin. Yep. And that way you, you're 100% Which is know. the correct way to do it. I think Al from Skid Factory has a video on that, which you yeah. should have a look if yeah. you're interested because he's, he's, yeah. he's done this a lot before. But it, this looks pretty simple in terms of just getting to just get, the DCCD control because that's going to go to the dash, the, the cluster. That's right. And the ECU maybe. That's correct, yeah. So it just needs to get into, if it's CAN, it needs to get into the network. Right. If it's not CAN and it's like a couple of signal wires, then they need to be fed back to the controller that controls the, the, the plug we need. Yeah. Um, so yeah, basically take a few more bits of tape off, work out where it all goes. Um, those, just make sure they are grounds. I mean, it's two black wires filtered with a whole bunch of other black wires. Yeah, which that is, is also, 100% ground. That is 100%. Yeah, you can see yeah. it. So it's just, but I kind of just want to work out, make sure that it, it is or it's not grounded somewhere stupid. Yep. Um, and yeah, then chop just- them out. Need just, some side cutters. Well, you don't want to chop, you want to be depinning. We want a side cut, we want side no, cutters. No, don't get cut the, side the stuff. Miles has depinned the harness for the DCCD and all the manual stuff that is not in our Lavorg body loom. We're going to put this over the top and then connect it all in and hope that there's room in the plugs in that car for these to go in and then everything should just come to life and work. That's the plan. What we're trying to figure out is just how different Subaru made these parts when they built the car. It's worth remembering that the Lavorg has way more in common with the WRX with its direct injection motor than the STI, which as we've now seen for ourselves, has a heap of different and better parts. We need to get to the fuel tank and its wiring so the Lavorg subframe can come out and we can drop the tank out from underneath. It is possible to get to the pumps from above, but we're pulling it all apart anyway, so this is quick and easy. We are up to swapping the tank, which is exciting. Um, I could just use the STI one by the looks of it because it looks physically identical, although it says V8 on this one and V6 on that one. So this tank could go in miles BRZ because that's got an LS in it. But anyway, um, what we are going to do is we're going to swap over the pumps. The main difference is that the STI one is a return system. So you can see it's got three here, one for send, one to share the actual fuel between the two humps of the tank and then one return back up to the engine bay for fuel pressure regulation, whatever. The direct injection one does not have a return line, so we do have to swap them. Uh, and I'd say the senders are probably the same, but everything else is different. So to make it simple, use the Lavorg tank because it's not dented, and the STI one is, but use all the STI gear in that. The fuel tanks themselves are identical, only the pumps and return lines are different. We could just throw the STI tank directly into the Lavorg, but I dented it while moving the car around, so we're not going to risk using it. The pump and the fuel sender both come out without much fuss. Being the car will have stock power, the factory pump will be just fine. Next we can get the tank back in the car and then lift the STI rear subframe into position. Diff is nearly in, it will bolt up, um, we're just sort of trying to position it with the gearbox jack so that the angle's right. You really don't want to cross thread these bolts, so you've got to just get it in by hand and then once it's all happy, you can use a ratchet. With the tank in, we can repin the fuel pump wiring to suit the new pump. It's the same gauge wiring and the same colours, so we're crossing our fingers and hoping that it works. Okay, so we're just going to start bolting stuff back together. Now, because most of our wiring we've established is okay and there's nothing else in the way, we can start putting stuff back together. So tail shaft and brake lines and just basically everything and make it look like a stock car. One of the things we weren't sure about was with whether the exhaust would work. It seems that it still does from the middle of the car to the rear subframe because it's got the mount. But what might change is once we get into the Lavorg station wagon part back here, I have a feeling the mufflers aren't going to fit. It might just be a matter of extending some pipe, which would make it super easy. Or it might be, yeah, just completely not a thing. So at least we can work it out. 
Miles is going to keep doing exhaust while I do some brake lines because the brake lines are also different. They're longer on the STI, so I'm going to steal the ones off the STI and bolt them onto this. It seems like the STI and Laborg exhausts can be mixed and matched, which is excellent and will save us heaps of time. The mufflers look very similar, but the STI is twin tip, so we'll have to use the Laborg ones for now, but I'll definitely upgrade this to unlock a little bit of power and some sweet boxer rumble. Next on our list is fluids. I'm going to change the oil filter and fill the engine with some Castrol Edge 5W40 with my mad Subaru specific funnel that I got. The gearbox is also getting treated to some sweet new lubricant using Syntrax 75W90. This is the factory recommended grade and it also goes in the rear diff through the hole where the temperature sensor goes. The factory STI radiator was trashed and the Lavorg one is slightly different so I've got an alloy radiator by Phoenix that is black and mad and the fans bolt directly to it and it drops straight in. Finally some radical green coolant concentrate with clean water means we can try and start and run this thing and keep our head gaskets in one piece for now. Bit of a progress update, lots of stuff has gone back into the engine bay, it's looking really stock, which is exactly what I'm going for at this stage. Uh, then the brakes are the next thing, the reason being the brakes that were on the STI are basically down to wafer thin pads and the rotors are pretty munched out as well. So you've got a brand new set of rotors to go on, a brand new set of pads into those massive six pot calipers, which will be awesome. That means the stock wheels fit, which do fit really well, which is a mad bonus. And so I'm hoping within the next 24 hours, this thing's going to be drivable. It's not the end, like the car's going to get modified like crazy, but but getting it drivable in stock form is the goal at the moment just to make sure everything works. Because of all the swapping around, we've used the STI brake pedal, booster and master cylinder on the Lavorg brake hard lines, but with the flexible STI brake lines. The brake fluid needs to be completely flushed and replaced to make sure there's no old crap in any of it. The old discs can then come off and the brake pistons can be pushed back to accommodate all the mad new gear. It's a good idea to clean up the mounting surface of the disc as well as the disc itself with some brake cleaner and brush everything so that it fits up properly. The old pads were really worn out, so some new good quality street and mild track use pads can go in their place. There's actually not much left to do now except to try and start the car. We've left lots of the interior apart so we can get to the wiring if we need to make any changes. It is time. I can't believe we got here so quickly. Now, there's a few things that might not work. We're not 100% about fuel pump both plumbing and wiring because it's different. Um, security we think we've got nailed. Everything in the engine bay is back together. So I'm going to push the clutch in and press the button and see what happens. Cross your fingers people. Clutch is in. Means I've got a green light. Goes green when you put the clutch in. Goes nothing. So I can hear stuff moving. The possibility is there's no fuel. We're confident that the pump and the fuel system works as the STI started and drove before we pulled it apart. But there are some slight differences in wiring towards the back of this car that we think might be the issue. Okay, so we just hot wired the pump at the back, uh, put a jumper pack directly on the actual fuel pump. So we know now it's not the plumbing because we are getting fuel up through the supply line, the return lines here, and that's the vent. Uh, so now we just have to check if there's some kind of relay or some electronic wizardry happening at the back that's different in the Lavorg from the STI to actually trigger and run the pump. Otherwise, I think it's going to start. This is the reason why you keep the wreck and also the reason why doing this is so much easier when you have a wreck because uh, if you realise you've forgotten something, you can go back and get it later. But if that is already at the wreckers or you just bought parts, heaps trickier. We've worked out that although the wiring looks the same, there's a slight difference in the fuel pump control modules in the back of both cars, so we will have to swap them over. All right, Miles is going to go press the button. We're going to hope we hear some fuel pump noises. Is the fuel pump all plugged in and everything again? It is. The sender plugged in? Uh, yeah. Oh, this one's not. That one's not. Sender will give us fuel level, I believe. And then hopefully if that controller does its thing, we're going to hear some Subaru noises. Hey, I heard a fuel pump. Dude, I heard a fuel pump. Wait, I'm coming around here. This is exciting. All right, let's do it. Go. No way. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yes. That's amazing. Look at it go. That's so good. Now we got to put the entire rest of the car back together. 
somewhere to be, I'm just gonna... No, no, you're helping me. Uh, you, you're not going anywhere. So we know the thing's gonna start, very exciting. Now we can put the front end on. The, uh, the job is not completely finished because there's some stuff that still needs to happen like a wheel alignment. Because we've had the subframes out, it absolutely will need a wheel alignment. Uh, and also get the aircon regassed. And that's pretty much it because the exhaust fits. There's nothing to make. There's been zero fabrication on this whole build really. Um, a lot of wiring stuff. So I'm glad that Miles has been here to help with that because that's been awesome. It has taken me by surprise just how quickly we've been able to get this thing running with only a few wiring hiccups along the way. I planned a trip for the following day and didn't think the Lavorg would be ready in time, but if we can get the interior back together, the climate control working and a wheel alignment done to make sure it drives straight, I'll be able to take this mad car for a proper test drive. Aaron has offered to scan the entire car with a Subaru factory scan tool to make sure there's no errors. And all going well, we should be as sweet as a sweaty gym sock. But before that, the entire interior has to be pieced back together. Due to crash damage, we couldn't use our blue front guards or side skirts on the wreck, but I managed to find two STI guards already in black, which is what's on the car now. Sounds like a stock Subaru. Beautiful. <laughs> Thanks man, thanks so much for your help. Wherever possible, I'm using the STI interior pieces like the center console, dash parts, and even the carpet, which is different between the auto and manual cars. We've reinstalled the Lavorg seats for now as the STI seats are properly moldy and yuck, so I'll fix them up and put them in later on. With the interior back in, the car now runs and has no check engine lights. So next up, we're gonna take it around the block and see how it drives. This is it people, the first drive. Martin! It works. Put your foot to the floor. Are you sure? Yeah, do it. Yes! That's all we have! Oh shit! And the brakes! So good. They're excellent, man. Dude, it actually works. It just feels like your STI. It it's feels amazing. Like your one. It's totally transformed, even though seating position, window, all the stuff kind of feels the same. It is transformed. It's Lego car, Martin. It's totally Lego car. It's Lego car. It's great. The most amazing thing about it's this so good. is that. It was actually designed to work. It was engineered to, to function it like this. It had a hole in the firewall. But a human somewhere along the line went, no, no. they can't have it, no. Yep. But yep. the robots wanted us to have it. The robots Because cool the robots it. made it have the hole that they needed for us to stick the thing in. They drilled a hole for a clutch in a car that was only ever auto. Like, why? I don't Missed know, opportunity. Mark. I mean, I understand the marketing and the accounts and blah, blah, blah. I don't. The reaction that I've seen so far for the videos that have come out is people like, we want manual, we want- Of course they do. We <laughs> thought this was like the project, but no. That's right. So here's where we're at. Um, so the guards are on, yep. front bar uh, is not here yet, um, but that will be here in about the next two days. So we're gonna put that on. Um, Martin, see next episode, people. Well done. We're gonna make it look epic. Now, we had actually planned uh, a trip to the snow tomorrow. Now, Martin, you, you've come up with a, a well, crazy idea, haven't you, mate? I didn't actually think this thing would be ready. I figured, of course, it's a perfect snow vehicle. I'm like, there's no way we'll have it done in time. There'll be something that catches us up. There's no way it's going to work, except it's ready. Yes. Like, with the exception of wheel alignment and some aircon gas, it yep. is ready to go. Yes. I'm so confident it'll work, so I reckon we should take this. Okay, well, I'll bring a support car. Why? Just in case. Call the Golf. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, so, uh, what's next? Wheel alignment? Aircon gas, gas. Front end when you bring um, it. A thousand kilometers to the snow. Yeah, there's nothing could go wrong. It'll be fine. And, uh, and it should be fine. So there it is. And then, people, a couple of mods, a couple of tasty mods in the next episode or two. That's what's happening. Oh, it's, oh dude, we're going to wreck it hard. It's going to be so It's going to be so rad. I may have already ordered wheels. I got excited and I already ordered them. Oh, did on you their way. buy something oh, that's dude, way too expensive? Wheels I've wanted for so long that I've never had on one of my cars ever. So the only other thing that's really still up in the air yes. that we haven't worked out that yes. hasn't been sorted and finished and done properly all the mods oh don't you said oh, it dude. you said it oh that's one of the, oh it's so manky yeah, though it is dude it's one of the ones from oh the dude it's got hair on it so what it's actually got hair on it dude you can't you can't say that did oh you see how many comments in the videos were just emojis of socks? Oh god, you might have seen that I said if this actually works and drives, I'd chew on one of the socks chew we found sock, and dude. we found about 20 in there. Get chewing, get chewing and then we're gonna get <laughs> Smell it! <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's chat! Oh, can I please at least chew on a bit that doesn't have the you pubes on it? Just chew that, can chew I, that bit I right just want to chew the bit that, I just want to get it's got one that. hair on it. Okay. Oh, fuck. Go. <laughs> oh, dry mouth. <laughs> oh, <laughs> 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 
The sock has been chewed and we're now square, but the wheels probably aren't, so it's time for an alignment. This isn't about maximizing tire grip or track times, it's checking that we're within the ballpark of the settings that an STI would come with from the factory. It turns out we're pretty close and only a few minor tweaks are necessary. With some tweaking of the camber, caster and toe, we can now recharge the air conditioning gas so that the climate control and the window demisters work correctly. So one of the greatest achievements I think of this build so far is that we have zero error codes. Like the car is happy even though we've sort of grafted looms and messed around with stuff, thanks to this guy. Um, we've got no codes, like it, it thinks it's a stock car and for all yeah. intents and purposes it is a stock car now. Yeah, well the only thing, what, what have we got left to make work? Just the stereo. The stereo, put it, I'm gonna put a stereo in it anyway, yeah, a right. different one. Yeah. So pretty cool, one, one red light on there, something about a sun sensor but we've, we do actually have it and it works so it's fine. Yeah. Um, but yeah man, thanks again, I yeah, appreciate right. it. I am so happy that we've been able to pull this off and all in time to stick a mad rooftop box on it and head up into the mountains, which is the natural home of any all-wheel drive turbo Subaru wagon. I'm so stoked with how this Levorg turned out. I mean, at the moment it's stock, right? Like this is just the beginning. But in terms of what the car does for me and all the things it enables me to do, how you can put luggage in it, you can put people in it. It drives really nicely, amazingly well actually. Like. I've driven a couple of cars with this engine, but when you add the combination of all the things that you're looking for in a car, and then it's also got good power, and it also handles really well, it's such a bonus. And I just like looking at the thing, I just think it looks cool, it's unique, I'm sure it won't be, because I'm sure a lot of people are gonna be doing a similar thing, especially working out now how easy it is, and the age of the car is just about right. They're all out of warranty, all the things that people care about with mods like this. Uh, and it's like the perfect snow vehicle. And this would be my fifth or sixth Subaru wagon over the last kind of two decades. I've always had a soft spot for them. I find them the most practical and useful car that you can do so many different things with and do them all well. Sporty enough, plenty of space. I like the look of them. I think they look pretty cool. And this now is about as good as it gets in terms of a modern one with the six-speed manual, which every Subaru person knows is what makes or breaks a good Subaru build, is having that six-speed manual in it. It's not a drag car. It's not a race car. It's not a roll racing car. It just does a bit of everything but does those bits really really well and the number of Subarus I've even driven past today is just a testament to how popular they are in this part of the world where you've got mountains, B roads, flowing roads, snow, ice, all the things that all drive is perfect for. With the help of some good mates it's been countless hours of work so far but this is just the beginning. Next episode we're going to kick off some mods and see if we can get this thing to slide.